Good morning or afternoon everyone. Welcome to our small footprint. My name is Nissa and if you're new here we are a family of eight who live off grid in Australia. Uh, normally I have daily videos coming out at the moment after my six weekly grocery haul showing what I do with everything and I'm a little bit behind. So I've got a bit of a video today that's two days sort of crammed into one. Uh, we are just really busy at the moment and I'm running out of time to edit and voiceover and all the rest of it. Uh, I'm also on antibiotics again for an infected wisdom tooth which is just like killing me and uh, impacting sleep and all the rest of it as well. So we've just got, it's the week before Christmas and that's just like everyone else we've got a hell of a lot going on and uh, I'm just running out of time. So today's video is a bit of a mashup of two days. I had to get the first few things done. So as I say each month, mince, beef mince is one of the first things that needs to be processed because mince is, because beef is minced into mince, it gives it large surface area, uh, which means that it goes off quicker than like a vacuum sealed roast or whatever. So they say 24 hours. We're a little more lenient on the side of that, uh, 72 hours-ish. Uh, it's definitely comfort levels, personal preference, you know, that sort of thing. But they do advise 24 hours. So beef mince is one of the things that we get sorted first. So we had hamburgers the first night for dinner because that's something we use beef mince for. And some of it got frozen. And then the other five kilo pack got sorted out today. So there's that. I also had four boxes of clearance mangoes that had to be sorted out. So they are part of this as well so that was the first lot of stuff that had to be done so come along and see what i got done with it and i will see you again tomorrow or the next day or when i get to it thanks guys okay so as i said we had to get the mangoes done so these were clearance boxes of mangoes a lot of them had some discoloration on the skin which means that there'd be some discoloration on the flesh of the mango as well which is fine we don't have a problem with that any it's you know really extensive bruising i just cut out and it goes to the animals uh any but mild bruising the kids don't care and to be honest if it's a little bit mushy but it's actually sweeter when it's got that bit of overripe bruising so some of the kids won't eat it because of the mushiness but some of the kids are perfectly happy to eat the really sweet ripe section uh, even if it's slightly bruised so all I did was I sliced them all up and peeled them all uh, I freeze most of the flesh to use for smoothies and ice blocks and cooking and all that sort of thing the kids clean all the pips off as I'm making them so they get a big treat of mango for the day that I'm doing it and then I was keeping some of the clean skins and pips aside to try making a cordial with as well. Uh, I'd really like to dehydrate some skins and things like that, but I just don't have the facilities to do it at the moment. So most of the, any excess bruising, skin, pips and all that goes to the pigs and the chickens. We don't give the pips to the pigs because I don't want them to swallow one and end up with issues there. Uh, but the chickens clean them off and then we stick them all in the compost and things like that as well. Once I did all that, we got all the flesh into the freezer and bagged up and everything else and everything else cleaned up. I wanted to make the cordial. So I minced all the skins in the Thermomix, like what I do with the pineapple. So I gave them a clean first and then minced them up. More surface area, more flavor you're going to get from them. So getting them small is a good idea. I added them and the pips to a big pot. Now everything I was reading had about 500 mils of water to about two cups of sorry two whole mangoes and a cup of sugar so that's sort of the ratios that I went with so I added I ended up with uh, 10 mango like 10 pips and two skins per pip sort of thing uh, so I did about two and a half liters of water and around about five cups of sugar scant cups of sugar uh, and put it all together and stuck it on the stove now I wanted to do sort of like a mango lime not just mango so I didn't have any lime juice that I could find saved so I'm sure there's some in the freezer but I, I couldn't find it but I had all these slices of frozen limes so I threw all them in there as well which will give it a maybe a little bit of bitterness because the skin's in there but the mango should be well and truly sweet enough to counteract that so I start, added all of that and then I simmered it for about 25 minutes. I After it simmered for 25 minutes, I put the lid on it and let it steep for as long as it did until I got back to it. So it's not going to hurt to sit there and steep for any period of time. So I think it's steeped for most of the day, to be honest. I put it out of the way and just let it go. Uh, now, Daryl doesn't like 
uh, chunks in his cordial, like bits of pulp or anything in his cordial. So when I went to strain it, I actually strained it through a flour sack tea towel, which is a, quite a fine sort of a thing to strain it through. So I filled two bottles with the quite um, clear liquid for him, well, for me and him or whatever to have with our soda stream. But it was hard going getting it through that finer cloth and some of this was for the kids as well so what I did was I took it out of the cloth and just put it through a sieve after a while too so there's a couple of bottles that are quite pulpy but I think the kids will really enjoy it anyway because they're not like he is about that sort of thing uh, and I might like it as well because I don't mind a bit of fruit in my cordial either so there's two bottles that are kind of really nice and clear and two that are really pulpy uh, we did try the clear one but the clear one and, and it's very limey. It's not very sweet and mango -y at all, which appeals to Daryl because he's not a huge fan of mango anyway. And that's probably because of the lack of pulp, to be honest. So I'd imagine that the pulpy ones are probably quite sweet and pleasant. So I'm going to have to give that a go um, when I make it up next because I think that most of the mango flavor was lacking in the clear one because the pulp is needed to give it that flavor. Uh, I probably could have got more than the four bottles out of it, but it was nighttime by now and I was just really, really over it. <laughs> So the chickens will really enjoy all that cooked flesh anyway. So that's where the rest of that went. Uh, and Daryl really enjoyed the limey one. I didn't end up canning these either because uh, it's Christmas time. It'll all get drunk in the next couple of weeks. So that's fine. So then the next day I got to the mince. As has been said, mince is something that needs to be dealt with fairly quickly. Uh, I think the uh, labeling normally says 24 hours. We are happy to give it sort of 72 but it's personal preference you go by smell look you know it's whether it's stored appropriately all that sort of thing uh, so I used some of the mints for hamburgers some of it went in the freezer and then I used the whole other packet to make bolognese so I thought I could either freeze the mints as is and then have to defrost it to make things later or I just make the bolognese and then freeze the bolognese which seemed like a much more efficient use of my time so my bolognese is pretty simple. I've been through it a few times here, so I've just sped up a lot of the footage and I'm just going to go over it. But I start my bolognese off with a vegetable base. So I mince up carrots, celery, mushrooms if I've got it, zucchini, onion, garlic, bacon, anything like that. And I mince it all up in the thermomix so that it's finely sort of small pieces because I... The kids prefer not to have the texture of the veggies in there, but the flavor is what it gives. Like the amount of carrot that you put in it gives it a real sweetness and things like that. And then I put it all into a stainless steel pot with a bit of oil and I cook it off until it cooks that water off and the onion goes translucent and things like that. I'm using my buffalo canner here as my cooking pot because it's the only pot that I've got that's quite large. I really need to get myself a cooking pot of a decent size. So I cook all the water off. Uh, and let it simmer until it's cooked off. Uh, I wanted to show you too the way I store my celery. So I bought two bunches of celery because I'm going to use them for seafood salad as well as stock and the bolognese and stuff obviously. So I cut all the leaves and ends off and stick it in a freezer bag and it goes in the freezer to be used for stock and that. And then the actual stalks I wrap in foil and stick it back in the fridge. It stays beautifully crunchy and fresh if you wrap it in foil. Uh, so this is the way I suggest doing it. Otherwise it goes quite limp in the fridge. Once the veggies are cooked off to how I want them to, I add the mince. So I just added the whole five kilos of mince and I broke it up and browned it off. So I used the, um, I've forgotten what it's called again, but the meat breaker wrapper thing that was gifted to me and is awesome. And I link it every time I do anything with mince because it is really wonderful. Uh, hack it, I think it was called. And break up all the mince and brown it off. So you just want to get the mince, you don't want to, break the mince up too much which is why the hack it works quite well because it breaks up the chunks without making it sort of mushy <laughs> I suppose so you still have some chunks of meat in there which is always nice for texture purposes so I break it all up and get it mostly browned off it doesn't matter if it's not completely browned off because it's going to cook for a while anyway but I do want it mostly cooked off once it's cooked off, I start adding the liquid. Now, I must have forgotten to hit record for the first lot of liquids that I was adding, so I've hit it in the second lot. So basically, I'm adding exactly the same as what I did previously, except the first lot, I also added a jar of tomato paste. So all up, I'm adding four jars of posada, six cans of crushed 
tomatoes and then the jar of tomato paste and then I half fill the Posada bottles with water so that I can give them a shake and get any excess Posada out and put it in the pot as well because the bit of extra liquid is a good thing if I had have made sometimes I make a fresh pot of stock as just before I'm making bolognese so that I can use that fresh stock in the bolognese but I didn't do that today so I'm just using water and I'll add more seasonings as required to compensate for the fact that it's water not stock so and I also I have mushroom stock on the shelf and I totally forgot to use it so I could have used that as well so you just want your tomato based liquids it's personal preference whether you use posadas or whether you use tinned tomatoes whether you use fresh tomatoes roasted tomatoes anything like that but this was five kilos of mince and I used four of the posada jars six of the canned tomatoes plus half of those posada jars in water as well and it seemed to be a good sort of a liquid so it's going to simmer for quite a while while I'm doing other things uh, it, bolognese for me is sort of an all day kind of a cook so I just let it go and I watch it while I'm doing everything else next thing I got sorted was for dinner slash late lunch for today so we buy these rolled pork roasts that we really enjoy they're really cheap and we do a myriad of different things with them but one of our things that we do is we cut all the rind off the roast and then we slice it up and we cook it over potatoes in the cast iron so I lay all the I have baby potatoes and put a full layer of them on the baking tray and then I slice up the rind to lay over the top of them uh, I pulled out my Ryobi fan to help with the flies but there is still a lot of flies around so if, that has a, if that's a bit of an issue for you then just don't watch because it's Australia and it's summer and flies are just part and parcel of life the Ryobi fan is battery operated the same as our drills and stuff and works really well to be able to carry it around wherever you need to help uh, keep the flies off things if possible and I also have those umbrella style food covers to use as well uh, I so I fill the trays with the baking with the potatoes and then I put the rind on top I spray the rind with a little bit of spray oil and then um, sprinkle generously with salt before it goes into the oven and I do two full trays of it per so I do half the roasts rind per tray of potatoes is what we find works out well so once all the rind was off I had cut the I had cut the roast into sort of a one third and a two third so two thirds went back in the fridge and the one third was going to be smoked for eating with the potatoes so I made a really simple rub up that I always make I actually have a short that I've done to show how I do this rub and I haven't put it out yet I'll have to get that sorted uh, but it's basically brown sugar garlic powder onion powder paprika salt pepper that sort of thing mixed up together um, as a sugar based rub I like to use sugar in my rubs especially when smoking because it creates moisture so it helps keep the meat nice and moist uh, you don't have to use sugar though at all you don't have to use salt either it's totally personal preference so what I do is I cover the roast in a layer of the whole grain mustard so this was homemade mustard that I made the other day so I cover the roast with a layer of the whole grain mustard and then the rub so the crust the mustard and the rub together create that moisture and they caramelize almost but it also creates a bit of a crust on the meat so when you slice it you've got this really sort of tangy sweet flavoring that goes around the outside of the meat it does permeate to a degree but you know somewhat but mostly you just get that flavor on the edges of the slices which is really nice I have a Bluetooth uh, temperature probe that I use so I push that into the thickest part of the meat and stuck it in the smoker and then just let it go so it just has to get to 72 degrees so uh, we just let it do what it needed to do so while the potatoes are cooking and the pork smoking we're still working on the bolognese so it simmers for a while and then once it's all sort of amalgamated and you know all the flavors are together then I add the extra seasonings so I always add some balsamic vinegar and some Worcestershire sauce. I also added some of my homemade French onion soup mix because it has onion powder and stuff in it, but it also has beef bouillon powder or beef stock powder. So that will add a little bit of depth of flavor for the fact that there's no stock in it, that it's only water. Uh, you can add anything else that you want as well there. There's, uh, you could add a bit of salt, pepper, you could add a bit of sugar if your tomatoes were a little bit too much. You could add some, uh, anything you like in your bolognese I suppose uh, that is our basics that we use so 
it's you really have to just sort of taste it and decide what you want to add flavor wise some people like their bolognese to be sweet some like it really savory some like it tomatoey but some like it more with the meat flavor rather than the tomato flavor i add pearl barley to my bolognese as well it stretches the amount so i i'm doing it all by eye today i was really tired and i just I don't have measurements for you sorry <laughs> but I basically just poured the bag until it looked right to me add the pearl, pearl barley and I added a jug of extra water because the pearl barley will suck up a lot of liquid now our bolognese by the end of it ends up quite thick and I do that on purpose because it's easier to scoop into freezer bags it takes up less space and then when we serve it we pour it into the pot and I add a jar of my pasta sauce off the shelf into it so the pasta sauce on the shelf is full of vegetables as well so it's just a jar of tomato based pasta sauce I've got a video I'm sure of how I make it on the channel and that gets added to the bolognese we, we freeze the bolognese in 1.2 kilo lots and then add a jar of pasta sauce and that goes to a kilo of spaghetti and that will feed uh, six to eight of us depending on whether Daryl and I are eating something different or not plus normally a little bit of leftovers for lunch the next day not enough for everyone to eat but a little bit for someone to have so I just let it simmer you want to get the barley till it's soft so I just keep on letting it simmer add any flavorings as I go if I need a bit of salt and pepper a bit of sugar as I said if needed uh, just adding what you feel is right to get the flavor where you want it to be uh, and then let it simmer till the barley is soft that's sort of all there is to it it's a very simple meal to just start with the base and then flavor it how you want it to be flavored once the crackle and the potato is cooked we pull it out of the baking tray and put it on a rack to drain so the if you leave the potato sitting in the lard for any length of time the potato is just going to suck that lard back up and whilst that's really really tasty the purpose of doing it the way we're doing it is partly to collect that lard as well so we put all the potato and the crackle onto a baking tray above, uh, I'm sorry, onto a cooling rack above the baking tray so that the lard will drip down into that baking tray that we can collect. So we move all the potato and the, lard and the crackle out of the baking trays within sort of 15 minutes of turning the heat off. And then we eat from that and we let the, the trays cool a little bit so that we can handle them. Once the pork is at 72 degrees then I which is slicing temperature for a pork it's not a pulling pork this one's a slicing like a a um, sliced roast pork leg I don't know what how to say that but it's for slicing into pieces not for pulling not for shredding at 72 is the temperature for that so once it hits that we pull it out and I cover it in foil to let it rest for a while before cutting it and put it aside uh, then and then the trays that had cooled enough that we cooked the potato and stuff in that I could pour the lard from them into a jar so we use that for cooking uh, it's pork flavored because it's come from the crackle not just the straight lard so it's more for frying things off in a pan frying vegetables off and that sort of thing not for adding to like pastries or anything like that but there isn't a whole lot of it anyway so we just use that for cooking for frying off things and stuff like that a bit like you keep bacon fat for the next thing I got done is using up blueberries. So I bought a tray of blueberries, 12 punnets I think it was, and the kids had eaten most of them, which is fine. I told them to eat them, but there was a couple of punnets left. Uh, so I pulled them out and decided to make a quick blueberry bread. I did see something like this on Instagram the other day, which sort of tickled me, so I thought I'd make it. And it's a basic quick bread. I throw everything into the uh, thermomix. So it's like... I don't know a cup and a half of flour and half a cup of sugar and uh, a third or a half a cup of oil and a few eggs I'll find the recipe I'll put it down in the comments somewhere but it's just a, a really basic quick bread that I did I mixed the blueberries with a bit of flour as well and then so that to try and stop them from sinking though they did I probably didn't spend the time that I really needed to do it so I did the thermix batter folded in the blueberries and put it into one of the loaf tins and then just baked it. it takes about 50 minutes at about 180 uh, just keep an eye on it this was in the cast iron loaf pan that I recently bought which was really nice uh, I'm very much enjoy these loaf pans and the bread it rose really nicely I there was baking powder in it because it was plain flour I'll get the recipe I don't have it on me at the moment but it was just a basic quick bread with blueberries uh, while that was in 
the oven. I sliced up some of the pork to have for dinner. I didn't get a photo of dinner, but we had sautéed greens and potatoes with the pork. So we had some broccolini, some bok choy, some carrots, uh, some cauliflower, whatever veggies I had. I sautéed them up in a little bit of that pork fat uh, and a bit of salt and then served them up with some of the baked potatoes and the pork and a little bit of gravy. And that was dinner for the night. And then we had the blueberry bread for dessert. So that was, it turned out really nicely. I reckon I could do that with just about any fruit and it'd be fine because it was just sort of a vanilla quick bread base with the blueberries in it so I'll have to keep on trying that I'm sure it'll be fine with frozen blueberries too and that was dinner so that was a couple of days full of food uh, in amongst everything else that we're trying to get done we're still trying to get a lot of Christmas craft done that we haven't got done yet it has felt a little overwhelming this Christmas season to be honest uh, I think maybe because of where the groceries fell in amongst it too uh, or maybe I wasn't doing six weekly groceries last Christmas so it wasn't such a big deal I don't know but it does feel like this uh, December has been a lot harder to get the stuff done than I wanted to get done so maybe because the garden isn't doing as well I don't know whatever it is it's been a little tough to get everything done but that's what we got done in the last two days in getting the food prepped and I will keep on sharing as we get more done and as we get the Christmas baking done our potato salads and our trifles and all of that and realistically Christmas day doesn't have to be the day the only day that we have it all because my mum will probably come boxing day anyway so we will be having more of those sorts of foods from then too so it'll be sort of a week of fun Christmas food so thank you for joining me again today guys and I will see you again next time See you later.